and then God spoke. Why? Because little man, when they pulled him out of that secret place, he was covered with dust bunnies, right? He found every dirt back in that little hiding hole of his. And God said, isn't that like us? Isn't that like us? When we run from our father, don't we just find a mess of it? We don't come out clean from that. Let me walk you through this, and I want to share with you how God shared this with me, right? This is the lead up into this sermon. Like when God plays it out firsthand for us to see, we can understand this. My little man thought daddy could never forgive him for this, right? He lied, and he goes through those crocodile tears. I'm sorry, daddy, and he's crying. He's got that little choke up in his voice, right? I'm sorry, I lied, and I'm like, ah, there it is. That's all God's wanting, to relent and repent, right? That's what he's asking each of us to do, because all of us, like my little man, have ran from him. And he comes whispering and uh, calling our names. And if we will just come to him, even in tears, even in filth, even covered with the dust bunnies of life that get on us, he will forgive. Why? Because daddy always loves his children. Always. No matter what you do, how far you go, you are always loved by your father. Now watch, baby. Watch. Let's get into it a little bit. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to John 8. Because we've seen this before, we have seen it. Instead of running to God, they run away from him. Look, it's the same thing played out in a different circumstance. Watch what I'm saying. John 8, verse 2. At dawn he appeared, appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. We're talking Jesus. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. Now watch this. Like I told you I brought a little man up to my level to have this conversation. We don't lie, right? Jesus had to come down to their level because they were already in the field. So he had to come down and play in it himself. You know what I'm saying? He's writing in the ground what you think he's writing. Liars. Sin. Like he in their territory. Now he's coming down to their level that they might understand. And look at the conversation that takes place. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Let's, let's, let's stop right there. He says, the one without sin, throw the first stone. You know what he's doing? He's doing just like me and little man had the conversation. Listen to me, gentlemen. I know you've lied. <laughs> I know you've sinned. You know you've sinned. Let's just... Bring it out to the open, right? Any without sin, throw the first stone. What you got? I know who you are. You know who you are. Let's not front this, right? You can't fool me because I know what's happening here. My son could have fooled me that he accidentally hit the roof of the football. No, you got to aim that way to hit the roof. You know you're lying. No, no, no. You know you knew where this woman was because you've been there too. You probably knew this woman, Pharisee. You know what I'm saying? You know it and I know it. Let's not play games here. You throw the first stone you think without sin. Go ahead. No? No takers? But these Pharisees, they made the biggest mistake of their lives right there. They did what my little man did because they thought they were caught in it. They knew that he knew. So they ran with it. They turned and tucked tail. Instead of running and crawling to the feet of Jesus, to the one who loves them, who would give everything for him, his very life, they ran and hid. And I promise you, where they went, they got filthy with it, just like my boy did underneath the bed. And don't judge me for our cleaning skills, people. We got three boys to raise. That is the last priority on our list, pulling out the furniture and doing that thing. I promise you, we got some bigger stuff going on. But these Pharisees, where they ran to, out of God's presence, they got nasty with it. How I know, because not a couple chapters later, they hang in the innocent one on the cross. I'm talking, you got to have a pretty filthy heart to do that, to know that this man has done nothing wrong, and yet you stir the crowd up and say, crucify him. What's happened to you? you got some stuff hanging on you. you got some nastiness. You went and ran from God, and you got in a whole world of trouble, and you coming out, and you filthy with it. And in all of your actions show it. Your heart is coming through. Crucify him. Where do you think they found that at? 
I promise you it wasn't in the presence of God. It was because they ran from him. Right? All right. So, you know the end of the story. Jesus looks up and goes, daughter, is there no one left to accuse you? She says, no, sir, not one. Neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. That right there is what the Pharisees could have got. But they ran away from God instead of running to God. 